Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we're going to go over a problem involving binding energy, mass defect, and the nuclear fission of uranium-235. We're going to figure out the amount of energy that's released during the nuclear fission, during the fission of uranium-235. And this is the problem. It says here that in a nuclear fission reaction, uranium-235 can be split into krypton-92 and barium-141. Those are one possible pair of products from the fission of uranium-235. There are others, but we're going to use krypton-92 and barium-141. And we are going to determine, using the average binding energy per nucleon, we're going to determine the energy released per reaction of uranium-235 and the number of joules of energy released from one gram of uranium-235. Now, this is the reaction we had in the previous slide. We have our fissile material, uranium-235. We add a neutron to it. We get uranium-236, which is unstable. Do -do 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 -do. And then it splits into barium-141 and krypton-92, just like that, and gives us also usually three neutrons in addition to that. Okay, and they can go on and cause a chain reaction and a bomb but we don't want to do that here. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine the amount of energy released uh, in the reaction of the uranium-235, and we're going to use the average binding energy for the uranium, the barium, and the krypton, and we're going to look those up. But I just want to show you, this is the chart you often see of average binding energy per nucleon versus the number of nucleons. Here's uranium-235. Barium and krypton will be up here. And you can see it's kind of hard to read them off of this exactly. We need to know the exact average binding energy, so we put that away. And you would look them up on a chart or a table or somewhere, or maybe they would be given to you in the problem. And you would see that the average binding energy per nucleon for uranium is 759, 7.59. For barium-141, it's 7, 7, that's not a 7, that's an 8.33. And for krypton, it's 8.51 mega electron volts. Those are usually given in mega electron volts. Now, that's the average binding energy per nucleon for uranium. Our mass number, the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, is 235. So we're going to multiply that by 235. We're going to multiply the barium value by 141 and the krypton value by 92, and that's the total binding energy per nucleus for the uranium, the barium, and the krypton. And what we're going to do is we're just going to simply take the difference between the uranium, which is the where we started, and our products, the barium and the krypton, and you'll see we have the barium and the krypton added together minus the uranium, and you'll see that that's 1174 plus 783 minus the 1784 for the uranium, and that's 1957 minus 1784, and that means that the difference in the energy between the uranium and the barium and the krypton is just about 173 mega electron volts. That's the energy released per reaction. Okay, in mega electron volts. Now, simply what we're going to do is we're going to convert that basically. The best rest of the problem here is really just converting between units. We're asked to find now the energy released in joules from one gram. So, this is the re energy released in mega electron volts from one reaction of the uranium 235. But we're, we're going to find for one gram. So, first we have to figure out how many atoms or how many nuclei we have. So, we're going to do a little bit of kind of stoichiometry here or simply unit conversion, because we're going to start with one gram of uranium-235. We know that one mole of uranium-235 has a mass of 235 grams, and that gives us that we have 4.26 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Well, how many atoms is that, or how many nuclei is that? We just take the mole value, and we know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, in this case, nuclei. And that gives us that we now have 2.56 times 10 to the 21 atoms or nuclei of uranium-235. And we know we get 173 mega electron volts from each one. So we'll simply multiply that because we know one atom releases 173 times 10 to the 6. That's mega electron volts. I put in here electron volt. This is the mega electron volts. And that gives us 4.43 times 10 to the 29th electron volts. Well, we were asked to find that in joules. And we know that one electron volt is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that gives us that the number of joules released from one gram of uranium-235, when all those nuclei are split into barium and krypton, is 7.09 times 10 to the 10 joules. 
Now that's the energy released in joules. Now is that a lot? I don't know. Is that a little? I think that's kind of a lot, but it's not really a lot. But it'd be interesting to know how much mass we lost. So let's convert that now into mass. And when we convert that into mass, we're going to use Einstein's equation e equals mc squared. This is the energy in joules. No, this is not the energy in joules. This is the mass in kilograms. And this is the energy in joules. And this is the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared, meters per second. And then we're going to square that. But first, we're going to solve that for mass. And we get that's the energy divided by the speed of light squared. The energy when we use this equation has to be in joules. So we take our 7.09 times 10 to the 10th joules. And we're going to divide that by the speed of light squared. And we find out that that is 7.88 times 10 to the minus 7 kilograms. That is not very much mass. Remember, we started with 1 gram. We got this much energy per reaction. We know that we got this much energy in joules from one gram, and we're now we're converting that into mass, and that's 7.88 times 10 to the minus uh, 7 kilograms, which is simply, or not just simply, which in grams, that's 0 0.000788 grams. Not a very big change in the mass, okay? So there you go. We found out the binding energy in mega electron volts. And then we found out the total energy in joules and the change in the mass. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs up and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.